Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Kat and today we are going to be talking about vitamin C. So a few times growing up, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who has heard this myth, was that citrus fruits burn fat and sometimes even specifically belly fat. I would hear things like grapefruit juice is a really great fat burner, it's a fat burning food, or even grapefruit juice would be you know, great to start the morning with because it just kickstarts your fat burning, things like that. And again, I'm sure I'm not the only one who heard this. And a lot of times it was citrus fruits that were associated with that, which really translated to vitamin C burns fat or belly fat is what it was really translating to. So today I wanted to talk about what vitamin C actually does and if it does or doesn't burn fat. So vitamin C's role in your body is to act as an antioxidant, which is a buzzword a lot of people have heard that, oh, antioxidants are so amazing, they're anti-aging, they're this, they're that, they're whatever. But really what that means is that vitamin C, which I've got my little orange because it's really high in vitamin C, is that vitamin C will reduce mostly mineral compounds found in enzymes from their oxidized state back down to a reduced state. So vitamin C kind of resets and helps out some enzymes in certain reactions that we need in our body, which is why it's vitamins, because all the vitamins that you've heard about are all essential in some way, shape, or form. And the two big roles that I want to talk about for vitamin C today are collagen production and carnitine production. So one of the other big areas that you see vitamin C mentioned, aside from potentially being fat burning, is in skincare products. A lot of times it is touted as being anti-aging, it helps form collagen, and it can help keep that firm, plump look in your skin. So it can, it's supposed to help avoid, you know, getting wrinkles and getting looser skin. Um, so a lot of times you'll see it in like face creams and things like that. And the reason for that is because vitamin C is involved in the production of collagen. And collagen forms our connective tissues. So that includes our tendons, our skin elasticity, even in sometimes your bones and your teeth. So very important for kind of holding us together, um, pretty literally in the sense of our capillaries. A lot of times those cells are actually held together by collagen compounds. So collagen is formed first by tropocollagen. There's three little protein chains that form a triple helix, that's tropocollagen. And then that tropocollagen is bound together when all those little strands start linking together to be stronger and to be that strength for that connective tissue to hold us together. Now that reaction to bond all of those little strands together involves hydroxylases. Hydroxylases have an iron cofactor in them. They've got a little atom iron sitting in them that helps them do their job of linking and gluing those little protein strands together to make a stronger overall collagen fiber. Now, the iron starts as a two plus cation. It starts in its ferrous state, and it goes from that plus two to a plus three. It loses an electron to oxidation, and it becomes its ferrous state, plus three cation. And then vitamin C comes in to help reverse that. So vitamin C is involved in collagen production for that reason. Now, a lot of things I've seen are, like I mentioned, those skin creams before that have vitamin C that are claiming to be collagen promoting and, on, and um, anti-aging because they have the vitamin C in it. Um, for those kinds of creams to be effective, they have to have a really high amount of vitamin C in them, like 10 to 20% range. Um, and they aren't always very effective at penetrating the skin. Now that is not my area of expertise. I am in the nutrition wheelhouse, not the dermatology wheelhouse. So I will just leave it at that of find someone who is a lot more qualified to talk about skincare products than I am. I am sure there are plenty of dermatologists on YouTube who have made plenty of videos about vitamin C creams that you could go and find and get good information from. But I am not that person. So we're gonna move on to the second function of vitamin C that I want to talk about, which is actually very similar to its function in collagen formation, but this time we're going to be talking about carnitine formation. Now this is where the vitamin C burns fat slash citrus fruits burns fat myth. I, in my personal opinion, this is probably, I think, where it came from because carnitine is needed to move fat from the cytosol, just kind of sitting in your cell, into the mitochondria so that it can actually be used for beta oxidation for energy formation, for making ATP and becoming energy. So that is burning fat, that is oxidizing fat. It's taking fatty acid chains from the cytosol, 
carnitine helps shuttle it into the mitochondrial membrane and once it is in the mitochondrial membrane then it can be broken down into two carbon units acetyl-CoA and then run through the TCA cycle for ATP production that is burning fat for energy and carnitine is involved in that it transports that fat again from outside the cell or outside the mitochondria into the mitochondria so that it can be used for energy however just because vitamin C is used in carnitine production, again, in a very similar way that it is in collagen production, it's still acting as that reducing agent, bringing that iron cofactor in that enzyme for carnitine production. There's another iron that goes from its ferrous state to ferric, and then vitamin, vitamin C comes in and takes that ferric uh, atom, iron atom, back to its ferrous plus two state so that the enzyme, that hydroxylase enzyme, can keep doing its same job producing carnitine so that, that carnitine can be present in the mitochondrial membrane to be there to shuttle those fatty acids from outside the membrane into the membrane for energy production. However, just because vitamin C is involved in that doesn't mean that eating more of it will increase that happening. So if you're vitamin C deficient, which is scurvy, you may feel super low energy and be fatigued all the time because you're not efficiently able to burn fat when you need to, but having very high doses of vitamin C and potentially enabling more carnitine to be produced will not change the fact that your energy, that your body burns energy on an as needed basis. Just because you have more carnitine hanging around doesn't mean that it will always constantly be bringing fatty acids from the cytosol into the mitochondria for no good reason. We are very good at preserving energy and only using it when it is needed. Um, so just because you have more carnitine hanging around in those cell membranes doesn't mean that they will always be pulling in fatty acids to burn. So no, I'm sorry to say that just eating a whole bunch of oranges and pineapple and grapefruit won't make you burn belly fat or body fat in general, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have them in your diet. So like I mentioned, scurvy. Scurvy is, I think most people have heard of it. You know, you call the British sailors limeys because they were having issues with scurvy on those long oversee travels that they were having and they couldn't really bring any fresh produce with them, but they ended up getting scurvy. They were very tired, they were bleeding from their gums, they would bruise very easily, they would have these weird um, like corkscrew-like hairs growing out of their body. All this stuff started happening to them and that collectively is scurvy and that is a vitamin C deficiency. So for two reasons there is, is why this happens, right? Because that connective tissue that we need, like I said, it holds together our skin, our tendons, and sometimes even our teeth and those cell membranes, when we don't have that, when we don't have that sort of glue holding us together, that's why we can bruise very easily. Those capillaries can break very easily and you get bruising is because those capillaries just weren't strong enough to withhold any kind of impact. Same thing with bleeding from the gums. That connective tissue is present in our mouth and in our teeth as well. So when it's not there, we just kind of start to fall apart. Collagen, collagen is very important, not just for looking young, but just for staying put together in general. And then they, sailors would also feel very um, tired, chronically fatigued, they would have no energy. And that is in part due to that carnitine production. If they weren't able to burn the fat that their body had, they weren't able to use that energy because it was trapped outside of the mitochondria membrane where it couldn't be burned for fat because that carnitine wasn't there to help shuttle it into the mitochondria. So. Sources of vitamin C are, of course, good old citrus fruits. So grapefruit, pineapple, oranges, all of those are great. But actually what is also an incredible source of vitamin C is bell peppers. So green peppers, red peppers, doesn't matter. Bell peppers in general are a really great source. And so are tomatoes. They're another really great source that people don't always think of. So you should, of course, have some vitamin C in your diet. No, it won't make you burn fat, but it will still help you be a healthier person overall. It will help you with carnitine and collagen production. So I hope you found this video helpful as reasons why you should have vitamin C in your diet, even if it isn't going to give you an instant six pack and burn all your belly fat. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more from me, and I will see you next time.